trade payables payment period. So with trade payables, there are suppliers that a business makes purchases from that they are supposed to pay later, that is on credit. So when we talk about purchases, these are the items that are directly related to the core activity of a business, not the indirect one. So a business that is into the manufacturing of fruit juice, let's say pineapple juice, the pineapple that they buy, the materials that are necessary for the conversion into juice are the purchases. Okay. So other items they buy that are not directly related to their core activities that are supposed to be paid later or are bought on credit will be payables, but not trade payables. Okay. Now, because these purchases are bought on credit, they will be with the business. The monies that are supposed to be paid later will be used for other activities by the business until the time arranged has elapsed. With the trade receivables, the resources or the money will be with the customers, so they benefit from that aspect. In as much as the money is with the business or the resources are with the business, the debt must be settled on time. This is good for business continuity because businesses mostly deal on, on credit, not because they don't have money to pay upfront, but because of convenience. Most businesses have bureaucracy. They raise purchase order, as we spoke about in our video on business documentation. Then they have to go to another process of raising the check or redrawing the money to pay for those activities. By the time they go through that process, the opportunity might have been lost or time would have been elapsed. So they normally strike a deal with businesses for them to be able to buy on credit so that the business will run at a faster rate and will not be shortchanged. So if they grant you that access and you do not pay, they are going to withdraw it and the business will be in tight corner. Now, when we come to the trade payable payment days, this is the number of days it takes for a business to settle the purchases that they make on credit. Okay, It's also the number of days averagely between the time that the purchases are made and the time that payments are made to the payables or the creditors. Another name for payable is a creditor. I believe you know. Also, this is essential for assessing cash management. When you are supposed to pay later, okay, you can be able to plan your cash outflow. If you have 30 days to pay and it's just five days to go, you can just determine to use the money for other purposes. Guaranteed that the money, at least the principal, will come in before the credit period will elapse. It's an indicator of liquidity because this payable payment days is linked to inventory turnover days and receivable collection period. Because you are buying inventory or the core items to the business, these items must be sold. Okay. Once they are sold, you are guaranteed of getting money to pay your debt. Also, when you sell the items, especially on credit, and the receivables don't pay it on time, there is the less likelihood of you having money to settle your payables. Because if you remember the current ratio, the current asset settles the current liabilities. So if you're unable to convert your inventory and your receivables into cash, there will be the difficulty in settling your payables. Let's look at the formula for trade payables payment period. Now, this is the trade payables divided by cost of sales times 365 days. This is because we want to estimate it over a year. Okay, when you go for trade payables, when you take the balance sheet of a business, there will be a payable in the current liability session. You don't pick the whole figure. You have to go into the notes, the details to find the trade payables in it. The cost of sales will be found in the profit or loss account. In place of cost of sales, you can find direct expenses for especially service companies. Okay. I want to analyze trade payable collection period. You would have to measure it as with other ratios to the prior years of the business to industry set standard or a chosen competitor. When you do so and yours is higher, it means that for that particular year, the business might be having sales challenges, as we mentioned earlier. If you are unable to convert your inventories into cash, you will have difficulties in settling your payables on time. Secondly, it means you have resources available at your disposal at a lengthier time to use for profit to come into your business. Thirdly, it means that the business might be having liquidity challenges, as explained earlier, for the year under review compared to whichever figure that has been chosen, either prior year, chosen competitor, or industry set standard. 
And lastly, there might be some hit on the reputation of the business. The longer it takes you to settle your debt, you will get to a period whereby you will be blacklisted and your credit arrangement might be redrawn. On the other hand, when you compare and it is lower, it means that the business was able to sell better. So they had more resources or more money to settle their debts. They were able to convert their receivables especially into cash. They were able to shorten the time it takes for them to sell their goods. And it also means that the business is operating under stricter payment terms. They have a supplier that does not allow them to hold the goods at a longer time. It might not have been in place in the older period or with other competitors. Let's test our understanding. The information is in relation to GKA Limited for the years ended 31st December 2021 and 2020. So we have the inventory, trade receivables, bank and cash, short-term investment, trade payables, short-term borrowings, revenue, cost of sales for the year. So we have to calculate and analyze the payable payment period for GKA Limited for the years 2021 and 2020. For solution, we restate the formula. Trade payables divided by cost of sales times 365 days. So for 2021, the trade payables payment period was 216 days. We found that by dividing 2,900, which is the trade payables, by 4,900, which is the cost of sales, multiplying it by the 365 days. When we move to 2020, it was 182 days. It means that it worsened. We also found that by dividing the trade payables of $1,500 in that year by $3,000 of cost of sales by $365. Now, when we come to the analysis, it took GK Limited 216 days to pay its creditors or payables in 2021 and 182 days in 2020 respectively. It means that it worsened. The worsening was 19%. Okay, so we have to investigate to find out why the days worsened from 182 to 216 days. Okay, is it that the business had an agreement with the payable to have that extension? Is it that they've taken a hit in that particular year, causing it to have that length of extension? Is it that the goods were not sold on time? Is it that the receivables were not able to pay pay the agreement for money to come in to settle their payables? Now here, the business might be experiencing liquidity challenges because of the rate of worsening. 